So we're going to start talking about piecewise functions. Before we actually do that, you've got to know what a piecewise function even looks like. Now we're going to go ahead and do the graph of this in just a bit, but for right now we're going to look at the formula of a piecewise function. So when we do an equation that's piecewise, piecewise is kind of a funny word. What exactly does that mean? Um, well, it means piece by piece. So we're going to be graphing a function, talking about a function piece by piece by piece. So every time you see a piecewise function, you get this little curvy bracket that's, um, we kind of have a hard time drawing that sometimes, but it, as long as you're making sure that those two pieces go together, whatever's going to be in here, that's what we're really talking about. So you're going to get a couple equations or expressions that are inside of this bracket. So if you notice that, there's really two functions that we have going on. Let me ask you a question up on the board here. If I ignored this right there, could you graph that? Could you graph 3x plus 4? Hey, what's your y-intercept? What's your slope? Cool. You could actually graph that, right? I hope you could. Without a table, you know you'd go up to the 4 on the y-intercept. After that, you'd go up 3 to the right 1, you draw your line. You all with me on this? This is a very much review for us. If I ignored this one, could you graph that? Say yes. 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 What's your wider step? What's your slope? You go down one, over one, after going up two on the y-axis. So we could graph each of those things. Now, when you're talking about a piecewise function, we put those two ideas together, but we do it with some directions. So what I mean by that is after each function, you're going to have a comma. And it's going to tell you when you use this little piece of your function. So in our case, it'll say, if x is less than 0, if x is greater than or equal to 0. You're always going to have the situation where you have less than and greater than something. It doesn't necessarily have to be 0. It could be 3 or negative 2. It could be whatever is up there. In our case, it happens to be 0. Also, one more thing to notice. Do you see how one of these has the equals and one of them doesn't? That has to be the case. They can't both have equals, otherwise you wouldn't have a function because you have two points for one spot. Does that make sense to you? So you got to have a, a less than or a greater than strictly in, in some case. So how in the world do we accomplish plug-in points in then if we have two functions? Well, this tells you what to do. Let me give you an example about how we go, go about finding out how to evaluate these things. So for instance, Let's say I asked you to find f of negative 4. So if I'm trying to find f of negative 4, of course f says we're looking for the function f. What's negative 4 say to do? Okay. But which one do I plug it into? That's the question. So when we look up here, it says f of x. We want f of negative 4 f of negative 4 means plug negative 4 into my function, but which one do I use? Do I use this one or this one, or do I use both of them? What do you think? That one that's less than 0. If I use both of them, listen carefully. If I use both of them, you're going to get two points for one input. Does that make sense? You cannot have that. It won't be a function. So let me make this very clear to you. You never, ever, 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 ever plug one point into both expressions. Are you clear on that? Ever. It's either one or the other. Now this should tell you what to do. This says we're going to use the top one if x is less than zero. It says we're going to use the bottom one if x is more than zero. That's basically all this says. So what you have to do is find out how much x is. That's x. How much is x? Is that less than zero or is that greater than zero? Then how are we going to use the bottom one if it's not greater than zero? Does that make sense to you? So you just find out where this fits. It's either going to be the top one or the bottom one. It's never going to be both. Okay, that's why you don't have an equals here, even if I told you about zero, right? It only fit in one of these things. Does that make sense? So whatever we have here, you're going to plug it into either the top one or the bottom one. We look at our x value. It says negative 4. We're going to use the top. So we just say, okay, 3 times negative 4 plus 4.
Again, why don't we use the bottom expression? Okay, so this only works if x is bigger than 0. This works if x is less than 0. Since in our case we're plugging in negative 4, that happens to be less than 0. That's the one we're going to use. And then we evaluate like we normally would. How much are we going to get out of this thing? 8. Negative 8. Negative 8. Okay. So we get negative 8 out of that. How about f of 3? Let's talk about that one real quick. f of 3. In this case, it says you go into your function f, you're going to plug in the number 3. So in our case, x is 3. Should we be using the top, the bottom, or both of these? Why? Okay, great. So this said if x is less than 0, we use the top one. 3 is not less than 0, right? 3 is positive. 3 is greater than 0? Yeah, that's what we want. That's the one that says to use. So we're going to be using the bottom one and only the bottom one. So we'll have, oh, what are we going to get here? Negative, negative oh, what? One. Oh, total? Yeah, sure. So negative 3 oh. plus 2. No, you guys are fine. If we have negative 3, because that negative has got to be there, we're plugging 3 in for x, and then we have the plus 2 at the very end. You're all right. We've got negative 1. Is it okay to plug in zero? Yeah. Is it going to be plugged into both of these functions, do you think? No, the bottom one that says equal to zero. Okay, so we know it's the inequalities have that greater than, greater than, equal to, less than, less than, equal to. Equal to zero, that's the one we're going to want to plug this into because we have the actual value of zero. So here, since it's not equal to zero, we can't use the top one. Here it is equal to zero. We are going to use that. So we're going to use negative zero plus 2. Negative 0 plus 2, of course, that negative 0 is not doing anything for us. We get just 2. Raise your hand if you feel okay plugging these numbers into our functions. Good. Why don't you try one on your own, and I'll show you how to graph these. There you go. So take each of those numbers, plug them into the appropriate function, and see what you get. Let's see where these guys fit. Now, I, I told you we never, ever, ever plug one number into both functions, because otherwise, 
you'd have something that really isn't truly a function. What has to happen on, on g of x is you plug in one number, you get out one number. You can't plug in one number, you get out two numbers. That means you don't have a function out of this thing. So we needed these directions to make sure we're doing this correctly, make sure we're getting out one point, one value for every value we plug in. So when we look at g of 4, it says you're going to look for, at g, that's g, you're going to use your directions to plug 4 into the correct spot. So we use our top function or our top expression if x is less than or equal to 0. We use the bottom one if x is more than 0. In this case, we're going to use the top one or the bottom one. Bottom one. Definitely the bottom one. We had 4. 4 is greater than 0. So we're using the bottom expression. And we get 5 out of that. Raise your hand if you got 5. Good for you. Okay, next one, negative 2. Are we still going to be using the bottom expression for negative 2? No. no, that wouldn't make sense because negative 2 is not greater than 0. Negative 2 is less than or equal to 0, so we use our top expression, negative 4 times negative 2 minus 2. And what do we get out of that, folks? Six. Sure, because we have positive 8 minus 2, that's going to give us 6. And lastly, 0, where 0 fit? Top one, bottom one? Oh. Yeah, definitely, because that's where our equal is at. So negative 4 times 0 minus 2, whatever being said and done, we get negative 2 out of that. Are you guys with it on this one? Do you understand how to plug the numbers into our, our piecewise functions? Please look where it fits according to our directions off to the right hand side. We use how many? Both or just one? Just one. Just one. It's got to fit somewhere. It will fit somewhere. It doesn't ever fit in both of them, okay? Um, that, that's going to tell me. I'm going to give you a problem like this on the test. It's going to be very easy if you know what you're doing, right? You just plug numbers in. If you plug it into both of them, I know you don't know what you're doing. I'll just give you zero. If you plug it into one of them, then I know you know what you, at least you know the idea behind this, okay? So that's, that's your idea. Now, the second thing we're going to do is figure out how to graph these. And we'll just stick with the same ones. Now, I'd really like you to get away from graphing linear functions like, like these are with tables. It just take, it takes too long. It takes a long time. And plugging in negatives, sometimes people mess that up. So we really do need to be graphing with our y-intercept and then using our slope. But how do we graph it? in a piecewise function. Well, here's our steps. The first thing I want you to do is do a little ignoring of one of these things. So when we look at this piecewise function, I want to completely ignore this bottom part. Okay? I'm actually going to completely ignore the directions for now. All I'm looking at right now is this 3x plus 4. What we're going to do right now is graph just 3x plus 4, as if it were like y equals 3x plus 4. So our first step is we're going to ignore the rest of this, the problem and graph the first function. See if we remember how to do this. So graphing the first function, 3x plus 4. Again, let's go over this one more time. What's our y-intercept for 3x plus 4? Four? 4. What's that tell you to do? Okay. And we're going to put a point right there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, put a point right here. Now, how do we find the next point? What do we do? Slope. Good. So someone on the right-hand side of the room, what's my slope? Three. Good. 3 over what? One. Okay, so from which point do I go? Do I go from the point I just plotted or from the origin? From the point you plotted. Yeah, that's right, from that point. Why would we plot that point if we're not going to use it, right? That wouldn't make any sense. So we have this point right here. From this point, our slope is 3 over 1. We're going to go either up or down. Which one? Up. Up, up how many? Three. One. one, two, three. And then over which way? One. To the right. Yeah, that's right. So we go up 3 and over 1. We'll put a point right there. And we're going to graph this line. Would you please raise your hand if you're okay graphing that line for me? 
Good, we should be. We should all be at that point, at least at this point right now. Now, now's where those directions come in. What we're going to do in the second step, we're going to do a little erasing. We're going to, this is going to sound kind of weird, we're going to erase the part of the graph that doesn't actually exist. I know that sounds weird, right? We're going to erase the part of the graph that doesn't actually exist. You see, here's the thing. Um, if you remember anything about functions themselves when, you were, when we went over this at the very beginning of, uh, of this chapter, I talked a little bit about what's called the vertical line test. Have you ever heard of the vertical line test? Mm -hmm. What it says is that every vertical line must intersect a graph at only one spot. If it intersects at two spots, it's not a function. Are you with on this? If I were to graph both these functions, look at the board here real quick. If I were to graph this one and this one, do you notice they're good? They're going to be crossing, right? They're not going to be a function as a whole. What I need to have is only one graph per little section. So that means I can't ever have a crossing of lines. Nod your head if you're with me on that. I can't ever have two lines on top of each other. Are you with me? Can't ever get that. So we're going to erase half of this graph. You just have to pick the right half. Now here's how you do it. You're going to go to the point on the x-axis that's listed over here. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be zero. It's only zero in our case. Okie dokie. I just said okie dokie. Oh, wow. <laughs> Old school. So we go to the point that says, it says x is less than or x is greater than, so that clearly means we're on the x-axis. Let's go to this point. Tell me when I'm at that point. I stopped automatically because I'm right there. But you're at x equals 0. You with me on this? Now, you're either going to erase the right side or the left side. The directions tell you what to do. So we're looking now at our directions. Where's my finger according to the x? What's the value again? Zero. So I'm at the right spot. Tell me, what's this number? One. Just according to the x, right? One, two, three. What's this number over here? Negative one. Negative two, negative three. What we're going to do, we're going to find all the x's that satisfy this. X is less than zero. Tell me something, ladies and gentlemen. Is this number less than zero? No. OK. Is this number less than zero? No. Is this number less than zero? No. Yes. These are, can you agree that these are all the numbers that are good for the, our top function? These are all the numbers that are bad for our top function. True? Okay, so what we do, we go to our value 0, or whatever value is there. We're looking for the x's that are less than 0. This is less than 0, less than 0, that's true. These ones are not less than 0. You all with me? Here's the key point. You're erasing, you're going to erase the ones that don't work for your function. So if we want these ones, we're going to keep this half of the graph. If we don't want these ones, we're going to erase everything that's to this side of the graph. Are you with me on this? We're going to erase it all. So everything from 0 to the right is gone. Agreed? Yes, no? Yes. Everything from 0 to the right. That half is gone. That's confusing for a lot of people. Every time I, that, this, that I teach this, this is real confusing for people. So again, how you, how you tell what to do, it really is all by your directions. Treat it like a number line, OK? Treat it like a number line. You go to x equals 0. That's here. You look for the values that satisfy x is less than 0. So x less than 0. You all nodded your head when I said, which numbers are less than 0? Are these numbers less than 0? Mm -hmm. Clearly not. Are these numbers less than 0? Definitely. This is a number line, right? This is 1, 2, 3. This is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on and so forth. So are these numbers going to satisfy the top one? Let me ask you a question, folks. Look up at the board here with, with me. I asked you to plug in uh, 4, didn't I, in the previous example? Could you plug in positive 4 up here? Where would you plug in positive 4? Here or here? Top or bottom? Bottom. Then why should we have half of a graph? 
if we can't even plug those numbers in. Does that make sense? We shouldn't have that. If you plugged in positive 4, it would not go here. Are you with me on this? Because you all got that one right, right? If you all plugged in numbers over there correctly, we wouldn't even have a number 4 here. So we'd have to erase that part. Yeah. Since, it, since the, down the top one we're doing is x is less than 0, could it, couldn't it not be on that y-axis that it's on right now? Yeah, that's a great point. We're going to get to that in just a second. Okay. Yeah, good. Thank you. You're, you're, you're one step ahead of me. But just one. <laughs> All right, so are we a little more clear on why we have this half of the graph and not that half of the graph? Raise your hand if you're, if you're clearer, get, getting more clear on that. Good, okay. We cannot plug in positive x's. That's why we don't have positive x's on that graph. Yes, sir? Okay. Now, after you do the, the top one, the bottom one's a little bit easier. You're going to repeat this for the second function. And you're thinking, well, how is that easier? We have to do the same exact thing. Well, no, not really. Um, you don't have to think as much. Here's why you don't have to think as much. And no one likes thinking, right? We like it to be easy. We don't want to think about stuff. Here's why you don't have to think as much. Do you remember how I told you you can never have two lines on top of each other? You can't ever have two lines in one se segment, right? You've already figured out that this is where this graph is supposed to be, true? So tell me something. If this graph is here, where's the second graph going to be? Here? It should be, it should be. Okay, so we already have a graph in this segment. If we have a graph here, we can't put another one in that segment. It's got to go in the next segment. So if we have one here already, we know the next one's going to be here. It has to be that way. They can't both be in the same little section. So let's go ahead and repeat that for the second function. Tell me something, what's my y-intercept here? So we're going to go up to 2 and put a point. What's my slope, ladies and gentlemen? What's that tell you to do? Down because it's negative, sure, and then to the left or right? So from our point, we'll go down 1 over 1. Here's what you can do with this one. You can draw the whole line. And I'm going to do it, do it this one time just to kind of show you that this is, this is going to work. <coughs> If I draw the whole line, we're, we're ignoring the purple line. I want you to go to this point. So we're going to go to x equals 0 again. And we're going to look for the points of x that are greater than 0. We'll go through the same process. Is this number greater than 0? Is this number greater than 0? Yes. Great. So these are the ones that are going to work for us. Are you with me? These points, they're not going to work for us we'd have to erase this half of the line. Now, before I erase it all, I want you to look at something. Do you see what I mean by the two lines overlapping? Mm -hmm. In this segment, we have one, two lines. That's, that's never a good thing. If you're doing piecewise functions and you get two lines on top of each other like this, you know you've done something wrong. You with me on that? You know something's going, something's a little fishy. You can't have that. So you're never ever going to get two lines in the same vertical segment. That cannot happen. So when we look at this, really, if you were to start this over, if you were to start this over, you really could just say, okay, well, here's my y-intercept. I go down one over one. Can I possibly graph this way? No. No, I'm going to get a crossover over there. I'm just going to graph this way. That's your piecewise function. Now, there's one other little, little part that I need to tell you about. But for right now, how many people are OK getting that far? Good. Now, Jose, Jose right, brought up a good point. Don't we have two points right here? And we know that can't happen, right? Well, which one do you keep? And that's answered by your directions again. The equals one, that says you have a point there. How we represent the points not actually there is by an open circle. So when you're looking at this, it says, x equals 0, x equals 0 on the second graph, we're going to keep this point solid. That's going to be a solid point. x is less than 0 means I can get all the way up to 0, but I can't actually plug it in. I'm going to make it open circle. So wherever it's equals, equals means a closed circle. Wherever it's not equals, that means an open circle. 
Open circle means you can't actually plug in zero. Where we plug in zero when we actually did our problem? Well, that was down here, because it equaled zero. We didn't actually plug in zero to the top function. How many people feel okay with this, this graphing? What I'd like to do, I want you to try that one on your own. Go through the same process, graph that. We'll take a couple minutes to do this. I'll be walking around. If you need help, just raise your hand. I'll give you a hand on this. When it says like less than or equal to, that equal to that means closed. Okay. If it's just open, if it's just uh, greater than or just less than, that means you have it open. Okay, we're going to graph the first one. I want to make sure that you have this part down right, okay? So when we're looking to graph these things, we really don't need a table. What we need is to understand the, the slope-intercept form and use that to graph our line. When we do this, we're going to ignore the second function completely. We're just looking at the top function right here. And we're looking at the negative 4x minus 2. What's your y-intercept for the negative 4x minus 2? Negative 2. That means I'm going to go down 2 and I'm going to put a point. Did you all get that far at least? Yeah. Good. What's your slope there? Negative 4. So that says I do what? Down. And then? Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, over to the right 1. And now, if you're, if you're thinking about this, you're like, wait a second. I know my negative, I'm, no x is supposed to be less than 0. My negatives are what I'm looking for in this case, but my point's off to the right. That's okay. Remember, you're going to be erasing half your line, right? So use that to draw your line. So there's my whole function. How many will feel okay getting that, that part of it? Good. All right. So we have our whole line here. Now we're going to erase half of it. Which half do we want? Now remember, we can only have one vertical segment that works for our graph on each side of our, our number that's given. In our case, it's zero again. So either this one's going to be okay, or this one's going to be okay, but not both. Only one or the other. Which one is okay? Which one is less than zero as far as the x goes? Is this less than zero? This one. So this is the side that we're going to erase or keep? What do you think? Keep. We're going to keep that side. 
How about this side? Is this the side we're going to keep? No, because it says we want x is less than 0. This x is greater than 0, but we don't want this side. This side's going to be erased. So again, we go to our 0. We follow our directions. We want x's less than or equal to 0. This is less than 0. This is less than 0. This is. That means I'm keeping this vertical segment. This is not less than 0. This is not less than 0. I'm erasing this vertical segment. So nothing on this side of the graph should be there right now. Another question. Should I have a point here or an open circle there? What tells you you're supposed to have a point? Good. So I should have that solid point there. Hey, that's, that's half our graph. Tell me something. Where should the next half of our graph go? Should it go on the left-hand side or the right-hand side? That's why it's so crucial to get down the first function correctly. You have to have this part right. Otherwise, you're going to have your, your graph flip-flopped. It's not going to look right. So the next one is x plus 1. We're going to go plus 1 on the y-axis. That's our y-intercept. We go up 1 over 1 because our slope is positive 1. It says up 1, right 1. Now, I don't have to graph the whole line anymore. Do you see why I don't have to graph the whole line anymore? I already know that this side has a function already. It has part of that piecewise function. I'm just going to be going that way. Why is it an open circle? Because it doesn't have that equal to Good. So I'm going to change that to an open. Can't ever have two points on the same vertical line. So we're, we're done right there at that point. Do you feel okay with this graphing? It might take a while. This is brand new for you. I mean, this is like, whoa. For some of you, like, oh, mm, mm. you don't want to do that. I know that you might not want to do this right now. It's graphing two lines in one and then erasing half of our graphs, right? It seems kind of weird. But graphing piecewise actually happens a lot. Uh, when you get to calculus, hopefully you will get to calculus, uh, you're going to be graphing and looking at a lot of piecewise functions. So you kind of have to know how to manipulate them now. So take some time, go back and watch this video again if you really are just kind of struggling still. You want to see how to do it again. I think I it took 35 minutes to explain these two, two examples here. So go back and look at those. Uh, until you really have an idea about how to graph these lines. The graphing part shouldn't be a problem. Everybody in here should be able to go up four, I'm sorry, to a one to the four, up three over one. Everyone can do that. Everyone can graph these individually. It's identifying which half of the graph to erase. And how you do that is by looking right here at your directions for your graph. Are, can we move on or are we okay with that? All right. Now the next part that we're going to talk about in section 8.3 is how to manipulate the graphs once we know what they are. If you remember from 8.2, we took a lot of time and we graphed some nonlinear functions. You remember those nonlinear functions? We had basically four shapes. We have basically we have four basic shapes for graphing. The first graph that we had, and this is back from a long time ago, like math A days, the first graph you see when you're, when you're graphing things are your typical straight lines. This would be the graph f of x equals x, or y equals x. Once you plug in for x, you get out for y. That's why we have that diagonal line right there. This is no big surprise. We've had lines pretty much our whole lives, right? So we, we've had these for a long time. The other ones we learned yesterday, oh, no, not yesterday, two days ago, was f of x equals x squared. The absolute value of x and the square root of x. If you were here a couple days ago, you know these, these make some weird looking graphs, some of these things. Do you remember the shape of f of x equals x squared? Do you remember what shape we got out of that? Yeah, show me with your hands how that looks. Is it the v one? Or the, the u one? Yeah, that's exactly right. Was it upward facing or downward facing? It depended on what sign was in front of it, right? But the negative made it go down. This one was upward facing.
How about this absolute value of x? Absolute value of x, was that also a u? Oh, okay, so that was the one that was just like that, started at the origin, and went up as a v. The way I remember that, absolute value equals a v, the v has two straight lines that come together, right? This has two straight lines. So take those lines and put them together, it makes a v. Does that make sense to you? That's how I remember it. Okay, very good. And this is the one we shifted vertically. We added one onto the end of it, and it made it move up one. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's why we went over that, so this would be kind of easier. And then this last one, this wasn't the U. This wasn't the V. Yeah, in fact, you know what? If you kind of, well, if you take my glasses off and you kind of look at it like that, this kind of looks like the shape of the graph a little bit, doesn't it? I mean, if you really, I mean, you have to imagine <laughs> you have to really, really imagine. Or you have to have glasses like mine, which are like, if I take it off, you're all just blurs. Just, just blur, every one of you. I see, I see grays and, oh, I see orange. I see that one real, real clear. But. <laughs> but what this does, it's half a parabola on its side. It's like if you took this one, made it go like this, and erased the bottom half. This kind of curves that way. Look at how the square root kind of goes that way. That's what that one looks like, or something similar to that. I need you to memorize these four shapes. I need you to memorize that if you just have an x, or an x plus something, or x minus something, you have a, a line. You've got a diagonal line. If you have an x squared, ladies and gentlemen, it is always going to look like that. It's going to be a parabola. If you have an absolute value, it is always going to be a V. And if you have a square root, it's always going to be this half a parabola on side, that funny looking shape that we have that goes like that forever. You with me on this? Now what we're going to do with this, the reason why I have to have you memorize it, we're going to be able to shift this around. And so by just understanding the basic shapes of these graphs, we're going to be able to draw lots of complex things just by doing a little shifting. We don't have to draw tables, we don't really have to do a whole lot of manipulation. We're just going to understand how to translate and shift and eventually make smaller, compress, and stretch our graphs. The first one we got to talk about is what we did to this. When I did this on my graph yesterday, or two days ago, and I added one to the end of it, what this said is, okay, you're going to do your whole function, right? And then you're going to add one. What did this plus one do to that? It did, yeah. It said, whatever you have, I'm going to add one to it. It's going to raise it up one. If I did minus one, what would that have done? Great, yeah. The whole graph just would drop down one unit. With me? They have the same shape. This right here is our vertical shift. If you add or subtract a number at the end of your function, what that's going to do is shift our graph vertically, either up or down. Um, by the way, you're going to notice that I've used f of x in every case up here. Do you guys see that? F of x. What this stands for in our in our examples for the next uh, for the next this whole section, f of x stands for one of these basic graph shapes. Because if I add one to the end of any of these, all it's going to do is shift it up one. If I subtract three, it's going to shift it down three. Does that make sense? So when I refer to f of x, I mean a basic graph shape. Okie dokie. That's twice today. Okie dokie.
So if g of x, our new function, is made up of f of x, and by f of x, what do I mean by f of x? Graph. One of these. One of those right there. If it's made up of a basic graph shape plus k, some number, plus k. What's the plus k do here? What's well, going to shift up or down? Good. So is, in this case, it's plus k. Is it going to be up or down? Uh -huh. Up how much? One. one. Oh, no, one. You don't even know. Okay, yeah. This is shift up k units. If I did the other way, f of x minus k, well, that's going to be the shift down k units. Let's do a couple examples to really illustrate what happens with this. On each of these graphs for right now, I'm going to give you the original and I'm going to give you the, the manipulated, the shifted graph. So our first graph, we need to memorize this. f of x equals x squared. What shape is f of x equals x squared? It's on the board if you don't remember. It's, uh, yeah, it's the parabola. It's the u. It starts at 0, 0, and it just goes like this. It's that u. So this right here is f of x. Now, what I need you to do is be able to get to here without drawing another table. Notice we didn't even draw a table for that one. We're memorizing how these graphs look. That makes it easier. We don't have to draw a table. Notice how g of x is simply our basic graph shape minus 1. What is that minus 1 going to do for us in this case? Great. So all you got to do is this. Watch carefully, okay? When you're doing your problems, you go, okay, I'm going to think about my graph, and I'm going to shift it. What was it, up or down? Yeah. Down. down one spot everywhere. Really, what you got to think about is just the vertex of this thing. If I shift down the vertex and redraw that graph, it's going to be in the right spot. So what I'm thinking is, here's my original. I need to shift this down one spot. So right here, I'm going to take this. I'm going to shift it from the origin down one. I'm going to redraw my line or my graph. That's how g of x would go. The original is right here, my basic graph shape that I have on the board. I've shifted everything down one spot. Drew, is going to be okay with that so far? Okay. Let's try one more. I'll have you do it. I want you to make sure that the square root does not go over the 2, okay? Make sure it does not go over the 2. So draw your original, your basic graph shape, and then tell me and show me what happens when I add 2 to the end of it, okay? Do that on your paper right. Hopefully you're starting to memorize these shapes. What shape is this? The square root? Yeah, that's that, that weird one half parabola on the side. Kind of looks like that from the square root, right? So this starts at the origin, the original one, just goes like that. That's f of x. No surprises there, right? Y'all have done our paper, right? The next one, g of x, says I'm taking that and I'm shifting it somehow. Can you tell me what that plus 2 does to your function? Does it go right or left at all? No. It's just taking that, it's moving it up two notches, and we're going to redraw the whole thing. You with me? Okay. By the way, do I even need to give this to you at all? If I just gave you g of x, would you still be able to draw the same thing I'm about to draw? You just take away the original. You say, oh, this would be my original right there. And then I'm just adding 2 to that. I'm going up. In the future, that's what we're going to do. 
So it says I'm going to start, I have originally started here, that's my basic graph shape. This shifts it up twice, up two times. Draw the same thing. Make sure you label them because we need to know which one's f of x and which one's g of x. How many will feel okay with this right now? Good. We're going to stop there today. We're going to talk about a little bit of homework. I need to make sure you see something. All right. So uh, yesterday we talked about a couple things. We talked about basic graph shapes that we have up here. We know our straight line is our x. We know our parabola is our x squared. It's kind of like the u shape. We know our v is our absolute value. Straight lines make straight lines. And we have our square root of x, which kind of looks like the square root itself, just kind of curved over. And then we talk about two things, uh, two vertical types of shifts. We have the up, where we're adding k. And we have the minus, where uh, that means we're going down. We're shifting a, shifting the graph down. Now, we did figure out like a couple days ago on, uh, on Monday, we could also do, besides a vertical shift, we could do a horizontal shift left and right. Do you remember doing that as well? But it wasn't after, the, it wasn't after one of these, these functions. It was actually within the function. So when we talk about a horizontal shift, a left and right, as a matter of fact, I think it was in this one, where we had that plus 2 on the inside of our square root. If you remember back from your notes on Monday, that's what we had. Well, here's the deal. If we add or subtract from the back end of a function like, like this or like this, sure, it's going to shift it up or down. Because what's happening is you're doing one of the original functions, like f of x, and then you're tacking numbers onto it. And what that's doing is raising the value or lowering the value. That's moving it up or down. However, if we add or subtract within the function, and here's how that looks, by the way. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be like that, right? Because that, again, that's a vertical shift. We already covered that. If it's within the function, it looks like this. Plus or minus k in there. And you know what? I'll use h so we, we get a different letter going on. k, we'll leave that for the vertical. But that would be within the function. So when we looked at this the first time, we said, all right, what is this actually doing? If we looked at our, our square root of x from last time, we had the square root of x plus 2. What this is doing, and this is going to seem kind of, kind of backwards to you a little bit, because when, when we did this, uh, our vertical shift, and if you add k, it makes sense that it goes up, right? If you subtract k, it makes sense that it goes down. If you add h within the function, a lot of people are going to think, oh, you know what, if I add h, it goes to the right. That would actually kind of logically make sense, right? But it's kind of backwards to that, and here's why. What this is doing, if you think about this like a timeline, you think of a timeline with like zero in the middle. Our, our timeline has zero in the middle actually, right? Because we have AD and BC. We have uh, before and we have after. And, and that's kind of like a timeline for us. We have a zero right in the middle. If you think of this as a timeline, what this is doing is speeding up where your graph starts. So this would be slowing down where your graph starts. Does that make sense? So like if you were originally starting at zero, and we're subtracting, you're starting later, and you're starting later, and you're starting later. If you're adding to it, you're actually starting earlier. You're making that graph start sooner. That means that this plus h is, it isn't a shift to the right, it's actually a shift to the left. If you think about it like a timeline, that should make sense to you. Does that, does that, can you follow that? So it's, it's starting our graph sooner. So a horizontal shift, that's a shift to the left or the right. This happens when we add something within the function, Plus is going to go to the left, and minus is going to go to the right. And that's the way this works. So horizontal shift. If you add or subtract within the function, Subtract within the function, it will shift left or right.
And again, how do you tell? Well, it's either going to be f of x plus h, and so you say it's within that the parentheses, or f of x minus h. Last time, if you didn't catch this the first time, what this uh, does is it speeds up or it slows down your, your function. So if you're adding h to it, what that's doing is saying, oh, okay, I'm going to start this function a little bit sooner. This is moving it to the left. So this is a shift left of h units. Make sure you have that down, okay? The plus means left. Minus h, this says I'm taking, I'm kind of like I'm taking time away, starting later. This is going to be a shift right. H units. If you really want to think about it a different way, if the whole timeline thing doesn't make sense to you, here's really what you're doing mathematically. You're taking an original number that you, you would normally plug in, you're adding something to it, making that value bigger, right? You're plugging that in, that means that this is going to start the same height, only sooner. For instance, uh, if you take out, uh, let's, let's do an example here. If you want to look at this one, This one. What we're going to do, I'm going to show you this graph and I'm going to graph this first according to the shift. I'll show you why this actually happens. I'll explain to you why that plus 2 means to the left. So, first thing I want you to identify is the plus 2 within the function or after the function? What do you think? Within. If it's within the parentheses or within the absolute value, that's within the function. So, here, this one is different than, say, if I would have done this. Check this one out. Do you see the difference where the 2 is? That 2, what would this 2 be? That would be an up, sure. This 2 is actually within the function. That's going to be a shift to the either left or right. We're going to determine that. So when we're graphing these, first thing we got to know is our original, our basic graph shape. What is the basic graph shape up here? It's on the board as well. What is that one? V. So we're going to draw the V. And I'll make sure I label that F of X. Let's see this one. Where should this one move? Should this move to the right? Well, I know it's, it's horizontal, so it's either left or right. Is it going to move to the right or to the left? What do you think? Left. left. Definitely to the left. How many spots? Two. So remember, we can think about the vertex here. If we're thinking about our origin as the vertex, we're going to move this left two spots and redraw it from that point. Here's how you can think about why this thing moves to the left and not the right. Are you ready for it? Here's a, like a mathematical example about why, not a timeline example about why. Listen, what do you have to plug in in order to get a height of zero for this function? What gives you, what gives you zero out? Zero. Zero. I plug in zero, I get out zero. Does that make sense? What would give you zero out of this thing? If I plug in negative 2, I get out 0, right? Not, not positive 2, not, not that. Well, if I plug in negative 2, I get out the same height. So what this says is this graph is starting sooner. I would normally plug in 0 to get out 0 for this one, right? But in order to get out the same height, I'm plugging in negative 2. That's two spaces to the left. So to get the same height that I would normally get for this function, I'm having to plug in two spaces less than that. In order to get the same height out of this function, that I got from this function, I'm having to plug in two spaces to the left of that. Does that make sense to you? 
So to get out of zero, I plug in zero, but to get out of zero here, I need negative two. That means I move my entire graph two spaces to the left. How many people understood that? Okay, good. So this is one of the reasons why plus means to the left if we're horizontally shifting or minus means to the right. Even though it looks kind of backwards, it does make sense mathematically because it's saying I'm starting my graph sooner rather than later. That's what's doing. That's what this is doing. Now, one question. We've done vertical shifts. We've done horizontal shifts. But we haven't done them at the same time. Do you suppose we can do these things at the same time? Yeah, we may as well, right? Let's see how that looks. Oh, if you need a title for this, let's call this combining shifts. <laughs> Just be careful how you say that. This is one of my favorite sections because of that word. It's just kind of fun. What a load of shift. Square. Have I used that one in here before? No, that's a new one. I'd say I'm not taking any shift from you guys, right? I said that one already. Big load of shift this class is. <laughs> okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I need you to look at the board here real quick. Can you please tell me what my basic graph shape is? Parabola. Sure, that's x squared. Now, the, another question I have is, if I hadn't given you this, just pretend f of x isn't there, could you have said the basic graph shape just by looking at this? Yeah. Anytime you get that square, that's automatically a parabola. Are you with me on this? So for sure, that's going to be a parabola, no problem. So even if I don't give you the basic graph shape, like a standalone item, you could really just look, look over there and tell that that's going to be a parabola. Okay? Now, if I left it just like this one, what would this do? Is this a vertical or a horizontal shift? Horizontal. Why horizontal? Tell me. Very good. It's within the parentheses. So this is going to be uh, to the left or to the right? Which one? That's definitely to the left. How many spots? Two. Okay. What did I just put on there? I know it says minus one, but I mean, what is that according to the math that we're talking about? Yeah, it's a vertical shift. So we can actually combine our shifts. Um, we just need to identify what these things are individually. Now, typically the way that I show this is I like you to circle the parts and identify each one before we go any further. So when we look at this, we're going to be looking from the left to the right, identify each little piece. We know anything added or subtracted at the very end of our function is a vertical shift. That's why we start there. So we go over here, we circle this thing, and you've all told me that this is going to be a vertical shift. This is going to be down one unit. Down one. Then we move ourselves to the right. We notice we have an x squared. That x squared tells me I'm for sure going to draw a parabola still. That's what that says. Then we look for anything inside the parentheses. So if we move from the right to the left, move from the right to the left, we identify our vertical shifts first. So we go anything added or subtracted, that's going to be up or down. Uh, plus means up, minus means down. So here we mean minus one or down one. We look at the type of graph that we have. We have a basic graph shape that's a parabola. We look inside our parentheses, see if anything's added or subtracted in there. Of course, we have that plus two, so we'll circle the plus two. And that plus two you all said was, what was it again? I know it's horizontal, which way, left or right? Left. It's kind of backwards of what it looks like to you initially. So only this one though, this one's the way it's supposed to be. Left two. Let's see if we can draw this. The first thing you might want to do is get the picture of the basic graph shape in your head first. So since this is a thing is a parabola, our basic graph starts at the origin and makes a nice parabolic or U shape. And we'll label it f of x. 
Are you getting good at drawing parabolas yet? Starting to look prettier? Well, I hope they, they will. You'll draw a lot of them. Then we're going to use what we did over here to shift this graph around. Again, what we do is we look at a, the vertex of our, our parabola. That's just this, this kind of pointy spot. If we move that thing around and redraw our graph, then we'll have the right picture on this thing. So where do we have to move this point, this vertex? Down one because we have the vertical shift down. So we're going to start with that down one. Okay, down one means right there. Do I make a graph right there? No, 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 because I still need to shift this over so now. So we could do a combination of these shifts. We do the down one, but then we also have to go where? Left two. Left two, okay, so left two, that's one, two. You know what, it, sound, it sounds silly, but I often have people do this. I often have people do this basic graph, which is correct. Put a graph here and put a graph here. That's not really what we're doing here, folks. Or they'll put a dot here and a dot here and draw a line. We are not drawing lines here. Okay, what we're doing is drawing parabolas. All you're doing is moving this parabola from the origin to somewhere where your directions tell you to go. In this case, down one and left two. So we do a combination of that. We move our graph down one from here and left two. So we move our vertex down one, left two, we put a point, and then we simply have to redraw our parabola from that point. How many people feel okay with that? Good, so let's redraw that, just make it kind of nice and pretty. G of X. Now, the graph shape doesn't have to be exactly precisely perfect. I mean, we are sketching here. However, the vertex does need to be precise. I need to know that you understand this is down one and left two, not down two and left one. So I do need you to label your graphs like that. Are you with me on this? So while your, your graph shapes might be skinnier or, or wider than mine, that's okay for right now. Uh, but I do need that vertex to be precise. Let's try a one on your own and then we'll move on. Give that one a try for me. So look from the right to the left, identify those shifts. The first shift you should see from the right to the left would be a vertical shift. That's anything that's added or subtracted after the function ends, the original function ends. So anything basically outside of parentheses or outside of absolute value or outside of a square root would be a vertical shift. Then we look at if there's anything inside, inside the, the function, such as inside the parentheses or inside the absolute value or inside the square root, that'll be a horizontal shift. So when we look at our problem over here, our basic graph shape, what's our basic graph shape, folks? The v. Yeah, it's the absolute value graph. It's like the V. So we'll draw that first, just to make sure we have that in our head. So that's f of x. Next thing we do is what, what I told you over here. We're going to look at each individual piece of this, circle it, and tell me what it is. I am going to have you do that in your test. Make sure you circle those parts and say, okay, this means up or down. This means left or right. I check for that. So I'll circle this piece. That's the first one I see. What does that plus 3 mean? Up three. Great. It's after the function. We know that plus means up, minus means down. So this is going to be up 3. You are right. Next thing we do is look at anything inside the function. I see a minus 2 inside the function. That means inside the absolute values in this case. That minus 2, what does that mean to do? Right, right, good, okay. So, I mean, correct. You're all right. We're going to the right. So that minus 2 means we're actually slowing down the function. If it would normally start here, now it's starting later. So this minus 2 means to the right. 2. 
And we do a combination of those things. So from our original function, we're going to move this up three. So we're going to do one, two, three. And we're going to move it to the right two. So we're moving this point up three, one, two, three, and right two, one, two. We redraw that V. The shape of the graph does not change. You should have two Vs, or two parabolas, or two lines, whatever you, you have according to your original. So here we'll label this G of X. This one's F of X. How many people got that correct shifting? Good for you, that's fantastic. Now there's one more that we've got to talk about. In fact, we've already talked about all of these. I'm just kind of giving them like the formal names and formally how you do it. We've already done all this stuff in section 8.1 or 8.2 by graphing them. But there was one more that we haven't covered yet. We've done the vertical, we've done the horizontal. However, do you remember there was one more when we put a negative in front of our function? What did that do? We had, remember we had x squared and we had negative x squared. Remember that? x squared was up, upward facing. What was negative x squared? Yeah, all it did was go, it just flipped it over. What that's called is a reflection. So we can also reflect our graphs. Specifically, we're reflecting across the x-axis. We're treating the x-axis like a mirror and flipping it over that. <laughs> Here's all you need to do to reflect a function. You take your basic graph shape, and what we found out from earlier, x squared and negative x squared were reflections of each other. If you put a negative in front of your function, what that's going to do is reflect it across the x-axis. That's all it does. Takes your original shape, flips it upside down. <clears throat> and that's a reflection across the x-axis. And if you don't remember, I'm going to draw this one again. Here's what this says. If f of x is our basic graph shape, which you all know that's a parabola at this point, negative f of x takes every value and makes it negative. So the zero, does the zero change? Am I, if I'm, am I shifting this anywhere? No, there's no plus, there's no minus, there's nothing at the very end, there's nothing within the parentheses, so it's, the vertex isn't moving anywhere. All it's saying is that every other value is going to become negative. So where we had positive one here, we're going to have negative one. We're at positive 4, we're going to have negative 4. We're at positive 9, we're going to have negative 9. So it takes this whole side and it flips upside down. And this side, we're at positive 1, again negative 1, and so forth. So this is going to take our graph and just reflect it. That's why that negative does that. And that will work with any of your basic graph shapes. So it will take whatever function you originally had, it will flip it upside down. That's basically what we're doing. How many will feel okay with the vertical, horizontal, and the reflecting? Sweet. Let's put all these together and see what we can get out of these. So I want you to graph this one. Now, i got to tell you, uh, if, if you start your homework and you're making tables up for this thing, it's going to take you forever. Uh, you, you're going to, I don't want to say you're going to make mistakes, but if you don't make mistakes, it's going to take you forever anyway. 
And typically, when people use tables on this type of graphing, they make mistakes with the signs. That's usually what happens. So really, I want you to get away from making tables on every graph you see. What I'd like you to do is use the shifting that we're talking about in class. Uh, I, I swear on the test, this could be like the easiest problem on the test. It seriously takes five seconds if you know what you're doing. If you have to make a table, maybe it's not going to come out right. And you take a long time to do that. So really practice the shifting on this homework that I'm, I'm going to give you tonight. By the way, you're going to have homework tonight. <laughs> Had a couple days off, right? That's a couple. That's a couple. Okay, you're going to notice I didn't give you the basic graph shape explicitly, but you should still be able to figure it out from just looking at this thing. So from just looking at this thing, would you say this is a straight line, is this the V, is this the parabola, or is this the, uh, the funny half parabola on the side thing? Parabola. Why is it a parabola? It has a square. Definitely, that's for sure a parabola. Now, we're still going to go about and do the same thing we did on these examples, which is we're going to go from the right to the left. I made a mis misspoke earlier and said left to right. We're going from the right to the left, identifying these things. So we're going to go right to left. The first thing I see is a plus 2. Now, we should know that that plus 2, that's at the end of our function. That's after everything's happened already. That's adding 2 to whatever number you get out of this. What's that going to do to our graph? That's right. This is a vertical shift up 2. No problem. This thing told us it was a parabola, so that 2 really doesn't do a whole lot for us. It just said, oh, you're, you're dealing with a parabola there. But inside of our graph, this thing, or inside our function, this thing does something. That minus 3 should shift it somehow. How is it shifted? Right, right. Good. So, so far we have up 2, it was at the end. We move a little bit to the left. We have right 3, we're going to move to the right. And lastly, there's one more piece of this puzzle we have. What is it? Okay. Yeah, this negative here. That negative, when you see that, that's going to be a reflection, or you're going to flip it over. So we'll put reflect. Well, let's see how this turns out. Our original shape, you can choose to put this or not. I really don't care. If you do put it, you have to label your functions. Okay? If you don't put it, well, then it's going to be implied that the, the, the function you draw is h of x. So if I draw my original like we've been practicing, if I draw that, you have to label this like f of x. Okay? And you have to label the next one h of x because I need to be able to tell the difference between them. You're with me on that, right? I can't have you just draw two random graphs and go, pick one. <laughs> yeah, that, that's not going to work. Uh, so this is f of x. Now we're going to make h of x by doing, by the way, this is optional. You don't have to do this. You can go directly to this one if you'd like. We're going, to, we're going to shift this around to make our h of x. It said we're going to go up 2. So on our graph, we're going to make two steps up. It said we're going to go to the right 3. That's 1, 2, 3 to the right. We do a combination of those moves. So we're going to go up 2 and right 3, and we're going to put a point right there. That's the first thing you look at. You look at up or down first, then you look at left or right, then you put your point, and then you determine whether you're going to be upward facing like your original or downward facing if it's a reflection. Which one are we going to be in this case? Yeah. yeah, we're not going to be like this. That would be, you'd draw the same parabola if you did not have the negative there. But that negative says your original, you're not only are you going to shift it up, not only are you going to shift it right, but you're also going to reflect it. So we shift up, we shift right, and then we draw this thing upside down. And since I have two graphs, I have to label that h of x. It's probably a good idea to label it anyway, but you, you absolutely must if you have two graphs on that thing. Would you raise your hand feel okay with this? Good for you. I'm going to give you two to try on your own. Let's work through these, and then we'll be done with our section.
By the way, I want to point out that when I do the square roots, I'll put a little tail at the end of that thing. That way, if you, if you have to rewrite it, you know exactly where that stops. So that's not going over this plus one, that's just this minus one right there. So go ahead and graph those. You can choose to draw your basic graph shape first if you'd like, and then shift that around, or go directly to the shift. But I do want you to circle those items and tell me what they're doing. So practice that. Have you noticed that when you really the hang of these, these problems can go very, very fast for you? You just kind of look at them and go, oh yeah, I know exactly what that's doing, if you really get the ideas. Let's talk about G of X, all right? Firstly, you got to be, it's, it's really imperative that you understand the basic graph shape of these things. Uh, what is the basic graph shape here? V. Yeah, that's the V. You've got to be able to identify between the parabola and the V and the half of that parabola on the side and the straight line. You've got to be able to do that. So in our case, for sure, we get the V because we have the absolute value. So it's going to be an absolute value graph. We're going to go identify these things. So off to the right, we're going to start over here. What's that minus 3 tell us? Down. Good. And this in here, that's within the function. So that's going to be what? Left. That's right. I mean, correct? Left. Left two. Okay, so we have down three, we have left two, we have seven. I did about where this graph is going. And then lastly, this minus means something. What's that tell you to do? Reflect. That's that reflect. That's right. So it's going to be upside down V. If you chose to draw your original graph, that's fine. So the basic graph shape here would be a V starting at the origin. That would be the basic graph there. Now, in order to shift this thing around, it said we're going to move it down three. Okay, we can do that. We're going to move it to the left two, and that's where we put our point, right there. Lastly, we determine whether we're upward facing or downward facing. That's the idea. In this case, since we said reflect, we're not going to be upward facing anymore. It flipped it over. So we should be not a V, but kind of like a mountaintop. That's really what we're, we should be looking like here. So we'll draw our V. Make sure we label this G of X. Yeah. Which way have you got that? Good for you, that's fantastic. What's the graph shape of this one? Yeah, Weird line. Good. Yeah, that's the half parabola. Make sure that when you're drawing these, I saw some of this on your last graphing uh, homework. Some people are continuing this downward. It doesn't continue. Okay, it stops. This graph actually is, is there. Uh, you can't even plug in these numbers. This is square root, right? So if you plug in negatives, you got this thing wrong. I mean, you cannot have that. Unless you shift it around, unless you shift it around, you can't have anything on this side of the graph. Are you with me on this? Shifting it to, is all bets are off the table because I can plug in different things depending on where my shifting is. But if you're just drawing the square root of x, it has to stop right here. It has an ending point or a starting point if you want to consider it that. So we'll identify what these things are doing. This is a plus one. That means we're going to go up one. Minus one, that happens to be within the square root. That counts as within the function. So if it's within that square root, we know we're going to be moving to the, in this case, right one. And we're going to reflect it because that negative is out front of the entire thing.
So from here, it says we move it up one spot. We move it right one spot. And that's where we put our point. But wait a second. We're also supposed to reflect it. So am I going to get the same graph like this? No. What am I going to get? The other half of the parallel. Yeah, it's like the other half. That's right. It's like this half. It's shifted a little bit, so it's not going to match up exactly. But you should get something about like that on your graph. Instead of being curvy this way, it's curvy this way. It's the other half of that parabola. So we move this up one, we move it right one, and then we reflect it. Make sure you label that appropriately. That's our f of x in this particular case, and we're done. Guys, do you feel okay about this graphing stuff? Are you able to identify the basic graph shapes without me giving it to you? Okay. Are you able to identify an upward shift and a downward shift? How about left and right? Which one's right again, the minus or the plus? Minus. Minus means right, plus means left. Okay. And what tells you how to reflect or what to do? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's very good.